So in my last video, I finally got around to fitting the RSC Competition Pro suspension onto the Spider, and then it rained constantly, which is Sweden. But now it's not raining, so I've got the car out and we can go for a drive, see what it's like, see if it was worth the wait, and more importantly, was it worth the money? So hopefully you can hear me okay. It is very difficult to record in the Spider because no roof and no kind of protection from wind or the elements and the engine is right behind me and it's not very quiet so we will see if you're watching this video clearly it recorded okay so uh, we will see the uh, first point i'd like to make is that this suspension is not at all proven it's not tested so it was me pestering arno at rsc to make the suspension that prompted him to make the suspension and it's only done a few kilometers of that on his personal spider so there's nothing to sort of gauge it against measure it against to sort of see if it works well or doesn't work well i know that the rsc dampers are fantastic so i knew what i was getting into there with the mcgann that i had before that had the rsc on and um, fantastic piece of kit but um yeah it <sighs> With the suspension on the car, any kind of niggles, which there were fitting it and so on, there's not a lot you can do about them. It's like, I am the guinea pig. I am the test case for this. This is the first set of RSC Competition Pro dampers for a Renault Sport Spider that exist. So that kind of should go into it a little bit. That there may be some teething issues, hopefully not. So first of all, let's talk about the ride height. Now it's low. Um, it could go lower than it is which is remarkable but it is low I've got it set at the kind of default setting that Arno told me to keep it at which he set for me on his car which is 320 mil at the front 300 mil at the rear uh, and I think you can get away with it I think that's okay but it's close I mean barely make it out the driveway and putting it on the jacks even with a low jack you can't get it under the front you've got to use the dollies to raise it up so it's a little bit too low i've not gone over any kind of big speed bumps yet but i suspect they would cause a problem um, but the way it looks is unbelievable so you've got to kind of forgive it that i mean it doesn't have to be that practical does it at the end of the day it doesn't have a roof so before we kind of get into some more spirited driving while the car's still warming up and I'll switch to the camera on my head um, because I can't mount it anywhere on the car because it'll probably fall off. The damper setting, I've got this set one click harder than recommended. So I think, I'll put it in the video if I've got it wrong, I think you've got 12 clicks basically from soft to hard. I think it is six rear is default, or sorry, six front, and I think it's nine rear is the default setting so that's um nine to hard sorry nine from soft so i've got it 10 from soft on the rear and i've got it seven from soft on the front purely because when you've got a passenger in which wasn't tested with arno of course you couldn't do that but when you've got a passenger in the car it's obviously even with the springs which are very tough you're still getting the car still sitting a bit lower and i think going into corners and things I don't want to run the risk of it kind of catching on the bodywork or kind of doing anything else nasty like that. But I mean, normal driving, anyone who's got RSC will agree with me. And it was the same with my Magan. I mean, the stock suspension on the Spider is brilliant. It really is brilliant. Um, but, you know, it's old now. Um, and, you know, this suspension from RSC is you know what four and a half thousand pounds worth something like that so you've got to expect it to perform better than factory and than other suspensions that are out there because the price range price bracket for this suspension puts it in the league of some pretty serious uh, contenders but because it's a Renault Sport Spider there are no contenders really you can get Penske race dampers but I'd imagine they're a bit too stiff um, for the road and again they're very old so um, the damping on the car is everything you'd expect really from RSC it's really compliant it's really comfortable uh, you can just tell 
I'm not explaining this very well, but you can just tell a good damper because it's the way it kind of soaks up the bumps. It's the, it's the way it reacts to the bumps. It's the way it reacts to how you drive, where it just doesn't get phased. I suppose the best way to describe it is it's like, it's classy. That's the best way to describe it. You can tell it's a classic suspension, like the BC BR that I've got on my Evo, that is kind of crashy and that's a bit kind of wobbly um, with the, it's got tougher springs on it, which probably don't help, but the dampers aren't very good. And you can see that very quickly, they sort of get out of the depth when you try to kind of step on them. Um, the RSCs don't do that at all. You can just see that at low speeds like this, it's perfectly civil, but then when you step on it, it's still perfectly civil and it just nails it really. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna pull over, put the helmet, helmet, head cam on, uh, and then we can kind of do a bit of spirited driving and I'll still try and talk to you and let you know how it's getting on and we can uh, see and you can just for yourself. Let me get off the stones. Now we've got our head cam on. We can see what it's like going around some roundabouts with the uh, temperature where it should be. Predictably, I want to test the cornering and I picked the longest, straightest road in the area. But uh, we've got some roundabouts coming up, so let's see how we get along. 70 years later. Okay, the, the first thing you, you notice when you're going around the roundabouts at a little bit of speed is that there is no body roll. I mean, there's very little body roll on this car back to it, but especially with the RSC on there, there's just zero body roll. So it becomes a case of how big are your balls um, and how good are your tires, I think. Um, and these tires, of course, I've got Yokohama AO52s on the car, Yokohama, sorry, not Yokohama. Um, they are as good as you can get, really. Um, so they're not gonna let go, or they should certainly hold on more than my nerve would. But yeah, kind of doing 100 kilometers an hour-ish, round about, round about there. Totally compliant, not the smoothest roads in the world, Swedish roads, but um, you know, absolutely no issues at all. No, no kind of bone shaking shenanigans going on. Uh, you know, very comfortable actually, which say is the same as it is at lower speed. It's like, it just stays kind of classy basically.
Yeah, I think um, hopefully this comes across in the video, but um, it does handle very, very, very well, um, like remarkably well. I think I'll do a video review of the Spider at some point, I'm hoping, but um, the chassis now with the suspension, it's way too good than the engine so it completely overpowers the engine and um, the car needs a lot more power it needs probably at least 50 brake horsepower more at least than the 150 it's got to kind of make anything of this chassis and this suspension so with the power that it's got it is just a go-kart hopefully that comes across so yeah absolutely thrilled to bits with it um, I can't really point out any faults or any flaws or any issues which is a good thing obviously you don't want to do that but you hope you don't do that anyway so we are back now uh, apologies that this video wasn't as long as you might have wanted and there wasn't as much driving as you might have wanted or i wanted to do i hope to do but I don't know if you saw it in the clip when the camera's on my head, but the electronic fault light came on, which is the only light on the spider that actually says something's not good. Uh, that light came on, so I thought it best to bring the car home rather than carry on hooning around in it. I have noticed that when I'm driving it and I'm cornering hard, that there's a bit of a burning oil smell. Uh, so that's going to be fun to work that out. So the conclusion that I will draw from that is that the RSC suspension is so good that the engine and physics just cannot handle it in terms of like fluid and oil and so on. Uh, yeah, that's the conclusion that I'm going to come to, uh, or I've come to, sorry. So the suspension, was it worth the wait? Uh, absolutely, it was worth the wait. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. I love it. And I loved it on the Megane. It is just sublime, uh, classy. I'll use that word again because I'm not kind of articulate enough to to put it any other way it's just brilliant it just no matter what you throw at it it's just perfectly compliant it's like when you're going through the corners doing like a you know speeds that are a little bit silly uh it just rock solid it's just like you're doing kind of 20 kilometers an hour it's like it, it just doesn't matter you could slow the film down and you wouldn't notice so yeah, it's just really, really, really good. The dampers are phenomenal. Uh, and I really look forward to being able to kind of push it more when I've solved this problem at some point. Hopefully get it on track soon too. Although that may not happen now with the car kind of complaining at me. We will see. But was it worth the money? I think if I hadn't gone and got stitched up with the thousand pounds in customs duty, thank you Sweden, then I think at three and a half grand or somewhere around that mark. Obviously bear in mind that it was the first set. Bear in mind that it also needed uh, the adjustable drop links as well as part of the kit. Was it worth it at like three and a half grand, something like that? I've not driven many cars with suspension of that price on, but I would say so, yeah, I would say it's very, very good. And I'm really happy with it anyway. Would I say it was worth the four and a half thousand pounds plus that I paid for it in the end? Pfft, just about. Um, but yeah, definitely if it was normal price, then totally worth it. So um, hopefully there'll be more videos to come where we can kind of push the car a little more uh, and see what the suspension can really do. Um, yeah, thank you for watching.